Hello, Recursive community, and welcome from Athens. Here with me in Atractos today is Steffi Vasilopoulou, who started her first business already when she was 21. Since then, she juggled many roles, an entrepreneur, a consultant, an angel investor, a mentor, a community builder, an inspirational speaker. Most recently, Steffi co-founded Helenides, a career network that supports women in Greece. Helenides provides female professionals with the tools and the trainings that they need in order to thrive. She is also a consulting um, international companies on strategy, on innovation, marketing, brand building. Steffi is also an avid podcaster. She is hosting the inspirational Sum Up Nevna show focused on work-life balance. Mm -hmm. Steffi, welcome to the Recursive Podcast. Thank you and welcome in Greece and in Athens, in a beautiful country. Thank you. It's really wonderful, especially now in the spring, and I'm very happy that you decided to join. Um, I would like to start with the beginning of your career and uh, <laughs> what shaped you to be an entrepreneur. So you studied at Columbia University in New York. Mm -hmm. First of all, how did you land it there? It's actually a very prestigious institution for someone who is born here in our area? Yeah, I'm not sure. This is the start, actually. When okay. I was six, this is the start. Actually, oh. my, my both, both of my parents were entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. are entrepreneurs, so I had this quality and advantages, observing these advantages inside my house every, da every day. So when we organized uh, small weekends or getaways, we always had one day, we came back on Monday or we came back on Tuesday, and we had this freedom of time. And I really thought that this was an, an amazing benefit to have this freedom of time. Mm -hmm. So when I was six, the first idea I had, I had, I gathered all the electronic equipment of the house in my room, I, and I made orders like telephone orders okay. with my friends. <laughs> and my mom or my father came into my house and said, "You took the microwave again. You took the camera again. You took the TV again." So I was, you know, pick up the phone. Hello, yes, would you like the order? Tell me your address. Okay, this is the, the amount. Please pay by card or please pay by b bank transfer. Wow. So okay. this was my fa I didn't play with dolls or cards. I played with this game. This you was my favorite game. Business. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so coming back from New York, I saw that the Greeks in um, the universities and colleges, they didn't have an online platform to exchange their textbooks. Mm -hmm. So I saw this in, back in New York and it, there was no um, platform in Greece and I started this platform when I was 21. Mm -hmm. But in order to monetize this, um, this exchange from one student to another, I had to take a commission from every sale. But back then the credit card penetration was very uh, low. Mm -hmm. So I had to find another way. And I had seen in, um, in New York the system of affiliate marketing, mm -hmm. which actually um, gave the advantage for small sites to, ad to advertise with big brands. Okay. So b uh, small websites could um, position, uh, excuse me, so small website could um, um, place banners from big brands and be paid only uh, per sale or per action or per click. So mm. it's CPA, CPS or CP, um, CPC. Mm -hmm. And there was only one company back here in Greece and I said, okay, this is a very nice opportunity. I will launch this second business. And when this second business, this um, advertising platform uh, grew and after seven years was huge, I um, stopped the textbook company. So this was my... How the, successful was actually the textbook company? Yeah, so the first one was the textbook, which led me to the advertising network. Mm -hmm. And then after seven years, this was a very successful company. We had clients in 17 countries. I was um, offering lectures in universities here and in big companies about mm. digital marketing and affiliate marketing. The only thing I was doing is working, gaining money and going out. Slow down a bit because I'm actually <laughs> quite curious. You mentioned that uh, you launched the first company when you were 21 and by studying how you can place the business in a suitable way, mm -hmm. you also started understanding more and more about advertising. Exactly. That was the second business in exactly. here. But still, it all started when you were a little kid. Mm -hmm. What? So you mentioned the freedom part to mm -hmm. decide of how you're going to design your everyday life. life. Yeah, I, was 
the thing that sparked your imagination to be an entrepreneur yourself. And it, it actually still sparks my imagination and my my willingness. Mm. How to how, because okay, money. Uh, some people they value money and they don't value time. Some people value time and they don't value money. But mm. I think that the the. Having the time to do whatever you want or you don't want is the ultimate luxury in life. I recently read, I think, this quote that a sign of a successful career might be the fact that you can just leave the office in the afternoon and just go to, to a kino, to the cinema and watch a movie, which I like <laughs> really much. But as we know, the everyday life of an entrepreneur is a bit different. Um, often. As an entrepreneur, you also go through these roller coasters. Mm -hmm. Did you observe that with your parents as well? The up and downs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And how was it for, course, for challenging? You? It was challenging. I remember a friend of mine recently told me because she was been part of this roller coaster mm -hmm. and she's been observing how difficult it was for her parents that she decided that okay, entrepreneurship is not for me mm -hmm. because it's too hard. How was it for you? No, it was challenging, and yeah. I like challenges. Okay, I really like. Problem solving and challenges. I think this is a typical mindset of the <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> okay, as we also know from experience, um, entrepreneurs often don't allow themselves to have the freedom mm -hmm. to do those nice things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think with the second business at some point, mm -hmm. you were also maybe, I don't know, maybe capturing yourself in this endless list of tasks endless. that needs to be done. Exactly. Um, I, if it's okay for you, I'm just going to maybe touch a bit sensitive topic, but uh, in, in when I was doing my research, you actually shared that you've been through a burnout period. Mm -hmm. How did it, how did it happen? Thank you for, you know, pointing it out. Yeah. You, you said it's something sensitive, but Actually, failure, burnout are all part of our journey, mm -hmm. and there are and these obstacles are the journey. Mm -hmm. So we have to talk about these. They're not taboos, and we have to put them on a pedestal. And when I was when I was you know during this burnout, I couldn't share, I couldn't talk about that. But now there's a huge learning that why, now I why, can share. Why is it so difficult to share about these things when you go through them for the first time? Because, what do you because think? usually we only want to speak about positive things mm. and we don't want to speak about the difficult parts mm. in both professional level and personal level. True. But we have to. And if, the more we talk about these things, the more other people talk about these things and more people talk about these things. And we will probably also have a better grasp of what entrepreneurship is all about. How did you manage to get yourself out of this? Out, out of it. Yeah. So this is when I started uh, sex therapy. This is when when mm -hmm. I started meditation, yoga, reading many books, workshops. I started, you know, turning the light inside. Okay. And telling to myself, I have to reprioritize my life. It's not only about gaining money and having more clients and attaining goals. There's something else in life. At this point, I think at some point you were actually serving. Con uh, clients from almost 17 countries, yes, yes, so it yes, was all a, over the like world. a very strong international yes, yes. agency exactly. and very okay. profitable company. Okay. But it has to. It, it, it was a huge lesson in my life, mm -hmm. and I'm very grateful for that. Mm. At that time, I could not understand it. Now I'm I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. So I started yoga, meditation, um, psychotherapy. I started a triathlon. Oh, yeah, okay. sports. So I turned the light inside and I said, okay, I, there's something inside me, a small voice, you know, this inner voice, we usually m minimize instead of maximizing this voice, we minimize it. There's mm -hmm. a voice inside, every, each and every one. Okay. If only we turned the light and we heard, we gave some space to hear this voice, this little soul inside us. If we are more in tune, you know, body and mind, we're all interconnected, our mind, our body, you, me, us. Mm -hmm. This interconnectedness, or this um, uh, soul that wants to express herself, and usually mm. we're like, no, only the task, tasks, the endless. We all wake up in the morning and we have this endless task list. Mm. Very much true. And what was this voice inside telling you that you need to do? I didn't listen to that voice 
until the burnout happened. And I was, you know, close to depression, never, not functional, not productive. I wanted to stay in my house, don't go out, not see my friends. Mm. How many employees did you have back like then? Seven. And so at some point you realized that you have to change your habits, life. your life, <laughs> the, the whole concept of it, probably. Uh, I see that uh, if you want to get out of this period, you have to think very holistically. It's exactly. not, you know, it's, okay. the only, it's the only way. How did you feel about your employees and your customers who mm -hmm. are having these expectations towards mm -hmm. you? How did you manage that? Yeah, after a year, um, I had to, I took the decision to close this business. Wow. Some people, they were like very emotional and they were telling me that oh, I'm going to regret it and I, I need to stay in this business. But actually my, my body was not able to continue this. Did you regret it since no. then? No. no. Okay. It, was, it was a gift. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. And this, you know, had ripple effects. Mm -hmm. So um, I started listening to many podcasts. Back then there were no good podcasts. So I, I took all this information from English podcasts. Mm -hmm. I read all these books, all these processes, internal processes mm -hmm. of knowing myself, this actually led me to my next steps. Mm -hmm. So when I was training for the triathlon, I, I was listening to many podcasts every, every single day, maybe two hours of podcasts every day. Wow. Yeah. And at some point I said, okay, th there's no Greek podcast in order to inspire a young woman in, let's say, Kavala or Thessaloniki who doesn't speak uh, English. So mm -hmm. this is how I started my, my podcast. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning I said, I'm going to do it only audio. But who would listen to audio back then, four years ago? I said, I, I, I shall also do it, um, you know, video on in YouTube. Video. Yes. I'm, like, I'm going to go on camera and the lights and everything. And I did the first podcast and it was like channeling. And it was like um, being able to transfer this knowledge of these all these interviewers in my podcast. It was like doing something very um, noble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the first episode, you know, it was like, I'm going to continue. And every, every, all my friends and they were asking, why are you doing it with this, Steffi? You're not gaining any money from that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like, no, it's one of my ways, one of my hats mm -hmm. to transfer knowledge, to transfer capital, network, experience. Oh, it's, uh, if you have to think it, think of it of, uh, as, a, as a business, it's actually very hard to commercialize a podcast. You usually do that for other reasons. There are more profitable businesses in the world than <laughs> that. Um, I have another question. Did you back then consider going back in or going into a corporate career where no. you can do the nine to five job? I don't know go back to home, have your free time, have your vacation because it's somehow regulated. No? No, never. Why, why not? Never. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not corporate? I think it, it would be very limiting for me. Okay. I like change. I like problem solving. I don't like ceilings, mm -hmm. glass ceilings or whatever kind of ceilings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get that. I okay. like being able to explore mm -hmm. different um, uh, markets, different ideas, uh, solve problems, either my problems or the society problems. Mm. I want, it, it's a way for me to be in creative entrepreneurship. Mm. So I might not be in creative playing music, let's say, but I think that entrepreneurship is one of my ways to unleash my creativity. Mm -hmm. I think independence is also something that uh, is very typical for entrepreneurs. They mm -hmm. just want to take their decisions independently mm -hmm. than others, um, from others. Um, I also wonder, at what stage did you manage to trust yourself again, that you're not going to go into the same trap? Mm -hmm. Because, um, yeah, we do have these patterns. We are ambitious, we are uh, motivated to, you know, change the world. And when you're a problem solver, you see niches, market niches everywhere. How did you know that you wouldn't do the same mistake again? Do you know mm -hmm. that? 
very nice question and mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up the word ambitious you just okay. mentioned usually even the word ambitious when we talk about ambitious people we're like oh, this is taboo this is too much this is very egocentric no mm -hmm. we have to be ambitious we have to go and be empowered to pursue our dreams and both professionally and personally so going back to trust trust mm -hmm. is something that we cultivate each and every day if you ask me today in the morning I wake I woke, I woke up ah, do I trust myself to go there and you know have this interview today yes you know, okay. you, it's, it's something you build each and every day. Okay. I like this. Um, and I guess once we accept failure, and we have a very weird label for it, uh, I think it can be also very, very liberating. Mm, exactly. <laughs> because after that point, there is nothing that you have to prove to others or to yourself. We're constantly trying to prove ourselves to people that we don't like. Mm -hmm. True, true. And we also we're always afraid of criticism and judgment. Mm -hmm. But we have to judge ourselves and be better each and every day. Not compared to Elena, Maria, Christina, or Sofia. Better than Steffi yesterday, or better than Steffi last year, or better mm -hmm. than Steffi last month. This voice of the critical. Steffi, mm. inside, mm. I guess it used to be also probably very strong before the burnout, wasn't it? The thing is, the voice, who, who is this voice? It's the <laughs> culture, the community, family, uh, friends, uh, cousins. Mm. But again, the, we have to minimize this voice and turn the light inwards. Mm -hmm. Without judgment, without criticism. Mm -hmm. You know, each and every one of us has its own journey. Okay. We're also interconnected, but we're also here to help each other mm -hmm. and be valuable to the other members of the community. So talking about all these hats you, you, mm -hmm. you, you said before, okay, angel investing, mentor, entrepreneur, all these things have a very um, common point. And this is about me being valuable, trying to be valuable to other members of the community. Mm -hmm. Speaking of communities, tell me, why was Helenidas necessary in, in Greece? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, in a way, we speak a lot more about equality. Uh, we speak a, more, a lot more about diversity and inclusion at mm -hmm. the workplace and also in, in, in the communities uh, as well. Which were the problems that you saw back then mm -hmm. and that you thought they need to be solved in a way. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go for Helenides. So when I started, when I was 21, the Book Beast platform, this, this was the name, Book Beast. So the, uh, <laughs> Book Beast. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Book Beast. Um, it was a very lonely process. Oh, so I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have any investors. I didn't have other um, young entrepreneurs to discuss about my new venture. Mm -hmm. So imagine, I, I was discussing about entrepreneurship with, my, with the friends of my father or my mother. Yeah. So I didn't have a, a community, a closed circle to discuss about my stress, my questions. Up until recently, four months ago, I wanted to find a way to, to give back and, and support these young mm -hmm. entrepreneurs or young women that want to launch a business. And this is why I was, I, I, I am a mentor, this is why I'm an angel investor, this is why I'm doing the podcast. So creating this network with um, Stella Samarzi, my co-founder, mm -hmm. was exactly that. It was a solution to this problem. We saw that there was no uh, professional network in Greece that could provide uh, tools, knowledge and in the community for women in Greece. Why do we need more women entrepreneurs, by the way? I mean, we all say that it's good, but how is that good for society? Do you have an answer to that? <laughs> I think at some point we've just accepted it by default that we want to have this equality everywhere. And since then I'm trying to understand what makes women entrepreneurs and women leaders mm -hmm. uh, different, better, necessary for a healthier society. Yeah, we could what discuss this. We could have you know, a whole series Probably. of podcasts for that. <laughs> But uh, what I'm thinking is um, we're all using 
women are using products or using services. Mm -hmm. Men cannot understand exactly how a product or a service can be better. So if we, if, if a woman can understand how a product or a service can be better mm -hmm. for women, let's say, mm -hmm. she can create a product or a service, a startup for this specific problem. True. Okay. But apart from that, all these companies, usually they have a target audience. When this target audience is 50% women and 50% men, so mm -hmm. they're addressing their product to a um, uh, mixed crowd, they have to understand and empathize with the needs of the, their audience. Mm -hmm. So when the decision making is only made from men, let's say five men on the board of directors, um, thinking of how women could, uh, let's say, do something different, women can really understand and empathize with this specific problem and provide solutions mm -hmm. and um, create something new and create some, uh, give value to um, the society. Mm -hmm. So it's not about 50-50 you know, or 70-40, mm -hmm. it's about um, creating products, services that are more um, aligned with the needs of the target audience that you are orienting your product. Okay, so very focused on the business objectives. And what about organizational development? Do women have complementary leadership styles necessarily? I think when we started writing books about leadership and reflecting about it, it was pretty much defined by this authoritative male mm. kind of leadership. And I think even today, women are trying to copy that yeah, but you know what? Yeah. It's not about copying that. <laughs> we 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 are we are all different. So yesterday we had a very interesting workshop about masculine and feminine energy mm -hmm. in the Hellenides network, mm -hmm. and we all all of us have a, a unique combination. It's like our DNA. Mm -hmm. We ha we all have a unique combination of masculine and feminine energy and all these qualities. Someone m might be more assertive, dynamic, powerful. Some someone can be more. Uh, re resilient, compassionate, empathy, empathetic, yes. um, you know, intuition, all, all these qualities, we all have a, a, speci um, a specific mix and a unique mix. Mm -hmm. We don't have to copy. We, we have to um, choose the qualities that uh, serve us even better. Mm -hmm. How do you teach that to young women entrepreneurs now? How do you, what is the example that you want to show them of uh, authentic female leadership or women leadership? So role models are very important. Mm. True. I also didn't have any role models. I would love to have role models. I was looking at, you know, Steve Jobs and Jeff Bezos. These were my role models. <laughs> we have to have role models outside. Re representation is very important in very different aspects, in entrepreneurship, in diversity, in inclusion. If we see the other person outside, that we can feel that we have something in common, then it, it's like it increases our courage to go out and pursue our dreams as well. Okay. These young women, um, they also need to have this honest conversation mm. to other amongst you know other um, entrepreneurs in, mm -hmm. in their group. Uh, what I usually also miss is this peer-to-peer -peer conversation mm. where I can be honest that I'm scared to death mm. of certain mm. decisions, <laughs> that I'm doubting myself, mm. that um, I'm very sensitive to the criticism of specific people that you receive, of course, almost every day. And sometimes it's amplified by your own criticism mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the head. Um, how do you facilitate this kind of exchange, which is so much based on trust? You know, it's not about tools and it's not about networking and it's not, it's just allowing people to, to be authentic in a, in a conversation. How do you facilitate this in healing this? So I'm, I'm taking your words, mm -hmm. please. Trust. We said about trust before, we mm -hmm. cultivate it each, each and every day mm -hmm. and with every interaction with the, the, the person and the eyes across us, we can cultivate this trust. You said the word be. We forget to just be. We are mm. continuously doing, doing endless tasks, doing, doing, doing. No, just be. And where we are with ourselves and with our soul, then we can also be with the other person next to us. Mm -hmm. You talked about um, authenticity. Authenticity is you know, extremely high in my value list. 
being authentic. When when you are authentic and you look at the, at the other person in the eyes, and you have a a real and honest conversation, then the other person will reveal the fear, the um, uh, stress, the criticism, the judgment, and all his his real self, his authentic self. So it, there's no point in life in having discussions that are not real, interactions that are not real. Mm -hmm. Life is very short, and we're, we're all here in this planet at this moment, in this body, to grow and mm -hmm. develop our soul. Instead of uh, being limited by uh, instincts and low vibrations and low energy and discussing about, you know, uh, chit-chatting and mm -hmm. gossiping. Let's raise our conversations. Mm -hmm. Let's talk, you know, uh, honestly, authentically. Otherwise, there's no point. True. Very much true. So all these peer-to-peer -peer interactions and discussions can reduce criticism, can reduce fear. We're always... Fear is here, yes, but we have to um, decrease fear and choose love. In, for our decisions. So all our decisions should be directed, should, should, no, mm. should, mm. should be directed by love, not fear. Yes, yes, you feel fear, but do it anyway. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think the one way to um, combat fear is by facing it and being exactly. too honest uh, exactly. and, uh, to ourselves first, and then it's much easier to be honest also to others. Uh, but there is also something that maybe we as role models and uh, also when I say we as content producers, mm -hmm, media mm -hmm, mm -hmm. actually can do a bit to change this hyped perception of what a startup is actually all about and what entrepreneurship is mm -hmm. all about. And I wanted to ask you, now working with uh, this group of women, do they have a realistic idea of what a startup is, that it's not, I'm going to do a startup and then I'm going to become a millionaire and my life is going to be so much cooler and uh, I will be able to afford uh, this vacation in the, I don't know, Seychelles or Maldives and <laughs> a yacht somewhere in, <laughs> in the Cycladas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. APM. How do they yeah, have so, this image? So yeah. every person who starts a, a, a business, a, a venture, starts for a different reason. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So one of my basic questions when I, um, I, I interview entrepreneurs or I um, discuss with um, startups when I'm angel investing is exactly that. Why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. Are you doing it for the Seychelles and the Maldives? Are you doing it for creating generational wealth for your family, being able to raise your, your kids, being able to provide them whatever they need, being able to buy a house? Would you like to solve this uh, problem, your problem? And which is uh, an international problem and a worldwide problem? Would you like to delight your customers? Why? Why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. So it's a different thing to do a, a lifestyle business. It's a different thing to do a VC business and, and, and have, it, have the vision to sell it to, let's say, a big company in the US. So why are you doing it? And what kind of answers are you looking for when you ask them? The the yeah. true answers. The true answers. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, they, they there are many fake answers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for the true answers. So everything is valid and as long as it is true and uh, authentic? Mm, yes. Okay. And which are the businesses that you would go after, that uh, you would invest in as an angel investor? What is important for you? I don't choose specific uh, okay. niches or specific markets. Okay. I really am um, interested in the product uh, founder fit. So mm -hmm. usually they talk about the product market fit, but I really want to see the fit of the founder and the market. Oh, okay. Why? This question is very important. Yes. Why? But you know, every case is very different. So I'm sometimes there's an intuition, and I'm like, okay, this is a, this going to be a, something very good. I'm gonna. Uh, I have you know I have, um, this inner voice says that okay, you have to do it, you have to invest in that. Uh, so the data and numbers and unit economics and um, uh, burn rate and churn rate and all these uh, uh, abbreviations, abbreviations are, <laughs> are not that important. It's, mm -hmm. it's more about intuition, if a founder starts this business. 
And this is why, what we're discussing because I, I'm connecting startup founders with investors. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And in order to help them grow, scale and um, uh, potentially exit their company. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, the conversation we have with these investors. Sometimes it's only about, you know, raw data. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's about intuition, the founder or the idea. Or there's something, an inner voice that says, okay, yeah, let's go. I have another question because you used to be an entrepreneur or you are still an entrepreneur, which usually is related to a very hands-on approach to things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, how is this now helping you being an angel investor and how did you learn to <laughs> limit yourself also to mm -hmm. be like, I am the investor here, I'm not the founder. <laughs> <laughs> did yeah. you learn Remo that? Removing the hats again. Exactly. And yeah. You have to juggle, but again, it's not about removing the um, hat or juggling. It's about all these have a common point, uh, being uh, um, valuable to other members of the community. Mm -hmm. So um, when I have a discussion, I don't have a specific hat, you know, the founder, the investor, the, I want to help. So one of the ways is angel investing. One of the ways is the podcast, one of the ways is mentoring. It's my, you know, my, my toolkit mm -hmm. in a way. Okay. Can you do more harm to a business as an angel investor than, I don't know, uh, just by wanting to help? Harm? Mm. Can you harm them in a way in the... These, all these startups, they need fuel mm -hmm. and they need smart money. It's not only about money, it's about giving your network, giving your knowledge, sharing it's not about only sharing capital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when these, uh, these founders understand that they have to attract people that they really can offer uh, something more than only money, this is when there's a very nice investor and founder fit. Mm -hmm. My first angel investment was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And through my career, I had very um, often people, high net worth individuals, and high net worth individuals, Greeks living in Greece or in diaspora. And they were, you know, messaging me or asking me, Steph, do you know any startups I'd like to invest in? So now I'm, I'm creating a small network, mm -hmm. a small community of uh, investors, angel investors that want to, in, to invest and support uh, Greek uh, companies and not only Greek companies, uh, like an angel syndicate, yes. like a, uh, you know, angel syndicate is not that um, known in Greece. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's something very new. So mm -hmm. um, instead of saying angel syndicate, it's like a small angel community, mm -hmm. a very bespoke and uh, um, a very be bespoke uh, angel boutique. community mm -hmm. boutique. Yes. yes. Boutique angel community. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, in this endeavor, you're going to invest in early stage uh, We've already startups. started. You've already, yeah, we've started. already okay. started. Okay. And no, it's, it's sector agnostic and not, 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 not necessarily stage, yeah. early stage. stage early okay. stage, yeah. Okay. It depends. By the way, do you have some kind of formal um, legal entity around it? In Greece? Uh, in the Angel Club. Uh, yes. It's an association, but I guess each of the investors will be investing through their own. They can invest directly or be an SPV. Okay. okay. Yes. That's interesting. Uh, let, yeah. <laughs> let me share something uh, about it a bit later on. <clears throat> so this is the latest endeavor. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the podcast. Mm. To, yeah. um, so I guess it all started with your own soul searching. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to share this inspiration and mm -hmm. this new, probably, world and new voices that you started mm -hmm, hearing mm -hmm. uh, with the others around you. Why is it important to speak about it today in the current, uh, let's say, maybe even post... You started with the podcast before the pandemics, but mm -hmm. I have the feeling that this work-life balance has been severely shaken by our new habits of mm -hmm. uh, how we work. And 
we may be now slowly going back to the old habits, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of people went into burnout. They, they couldn't manage their life. It was super overloading. Um, we mixed the workspace with the living space. A lot of it had happened. So why is it important to speak about it in a, in a podcast, maybe in a deeper level mm -hmm. than mm -hmm what we all have mm -hmm. around us. What, how is the podcast also different from the popular liter literature that you can find <laughs> around <Literature>. it? <laughs> but in real stories, about yeah. stories and experiences. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, these two years were very intense for each and everyone. But apart from COVID and the pandemic, we all had our specific personal stories inside mm -hmm. these two years. Mm -hmm. Divorces, kids, um, work changes, uh, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. So it was not only the pandemic. True. There is a very human side to it. Yes. Of course. So yes, with the, um, as I first started my podcast, they were live uh, on video. Then we switched to Clubhouse at some mm. point. Mm. We switched to Instagram Live at some point, mm. uh, Facebook Live. Mm. I, I always had to find you know new ways of communicating and um, amplifying these stories. And what kind of role models do you want to show there? Mm -hmm. Because I think um, personal stories they have a huge power. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you start identifying with the person. You start mm -hmm. thinking, okay, I see myself in yeah, Steffi. Exactly. I see myself exactly. in, in your guests. Uh, look what they did. Until now. Uh, all the, uh, I have actually 92 episodes. Amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. So I, I have to do a, a big party maybe on the, well, in, maybe in June or May we will see celebrate. Mm -hmm. You're invited. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we will be happy to join. Um, yeah, 92 episodes. Wow. I, I thought it was like, you know, 50 or 60, 92. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, in the beginning, you know, I was receiving some emails or messages once every week or once every two weeks. I asked Steph in a very nice conversation and a very nice discussion. It really helped me because we, we really have discussed everything from death, uh, money, uh, love, relationships, startups, in, investing, uh, creativity, mm -hmm. uh, disorders, mental health, everything, everything, everything. So um, during the pandemic, we had all these stories that uh, when, when something went wrong, everyone was like, okay, we need to hear this story. So mm -hmm. I was inviting personalities that could um, represent the issues of all these people and all the, the feelings that they were um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, feeling and their thoughts. And mm -hmm. I wonder how you feel about uh... Uh, a, a, an issue that I have. Uh, so, s some years ago, a lot in, in between, uh, probably seven, eight years ago, I also started my own soul searching part. Mm -hmm. I think this question has been occupying me for a very long time, like who I am mm -hmm. and what do I want to be? And I went in different directions. Mm -hmm. I don't know meditation, Buddhism, then at some point psychotherapy and when I speak to a lot of people in the business community, they come to me with, you have to read this book. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually happen to read some of them, but what I see there is like an algorithm, like a checklist that you, you have to do this tak, 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 and then your life is going to be totally okay and you will be so enlightened. <laughs> and from experience, I know that this is not the path if you don't go deep. And I, I hear you very well when you speak these things. And I guess for some of the people, this might be like, oh my God, this is so, such a <laughs> 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 Hare Krishna kind of thing. Um, how do you explain to people who are really in this process of soul searching that it's not about reading this book or listening to this podcast, mm. but it involves a bit more mm. inner work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So truth is inside us. We haven't forgotten. Mm -hmm. It's inside us. We just need reminders. True. Like books, podcasts, a small quote, a, a small conversation, a small discussion to remind us our truth. 
Mm-hmm. We know it. We know it. It's not about the book, reading the book. It's about, yes, checklist. You mentioned checklist. Sometimes it's about action. Mm-hmm. And, it, and this applies to everything. If you want to lose, let's say, three uh, kilos, you know how to lose, but you don't do it. Mm-hmm. When you read a book, and they're, okay, you have to meditate in the morning, exercise, go to the sea, go to nature. Okay, are you actually doing it after reading the book? It's not about reading For the book. For a couple of weeks, probably most of us will do it. Yeah, but, yeah, but you have, you have to change your habits and not mm-hmm. something... Uh, just for 20 days, 21 days, or 66 days. Mm-hmm. Make a life change. I see it like it's so easy. It's actually it's super easy. difficult. Yeah, of course it is. Of course <laughs> Each it's of difficult. us is looking, you know. Of course it's, it's difficult. difficult. But we need reminders. Crazy. And reminders, it's maybe a book, a retreat. Okay. I've, I've traveled to Thailand, I've done Vipassana retreat, mm-hmm. India, the Ocean Meditation Resort. You know, but it, it's not about going there and coming back. You have to integrate it afterwards. This is the, the key word, the integration part. Integration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds also very fancy, you know, when you say that you did this retreat and then you did the Vipassana and then you did something else, but actually the whole process begins after that. This exactly. is what I experienced, yes. Exactly. <laughs> It's not like you go there and after 10 days you will be magically transformed. Exactly. Unfortunately, there are no shortcuts. And No, and there are ripple effects. Mm-hmm. There the, the ripple effects. After that, maybe a month after that, six months, two years, the thing is to have the consciousness mm-hmm. to understand what changes has, have happened inside me. Mm-hmm. Um, still in the startup world, I'm going to bring you back a bit to the business topics. We have this mantra that uh, it's all about hustle, hustle, mm-hmm. hustle. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Um, and if you do it for a couple of years, um, then you would be super successful. And then at some point you might exit the business and um, everything will be fine. So you're now in the position of the investor. And of course, your interest would be to have a successful business. Do you somehow also pay attention to the habits of, of the founders, if they're healthy, if They maybe stress themselves a bit too much, mm. they work too much, they don't mm. put the limitations on the right. Do you do that? Yeah, it's extremely important. In order to have a successful business mm. and a sustainable business, you have to have the person driving the car healthy. Mm-hmm. If the person driving the car is not healthy, the car will stop in uh, Volos, it will mm-hmm. not go to Thessaloniki or Bulgaria. It will start from Athens, but will, it will not be able to go to Thessaloniki. So in order to have the car in a very good condition, with a good fuel, you need also to have the driver in a very good condition. Mm. So we have plenty of discussions with founders about their habits, about how to maintain their mental health, how not to be hustling all day long, how to take some breaks, some mindful breaks, how to incorporate mindfulness, how to uh, manage their employees or their teams better. Mm. Do you think that maybe we don't speak about it too much in the investor community, in the VC community? I think there are, you know... Because it's also, it can be also the investors who are pushing... Yeah, but there are so many examples of people even suiciding. Mm-hmm. Is this a good example? Yeah. <clears throat> So you mentioned that uh, a lot of your efforts are focused on helping the community around you uh, in different ways. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the role of an entrepreneur in this community? Do you think that uh, business objectives, and I'm not going to suggest you maybe, but beyond business objectives and making your business successful, and this is a actually the mandate of an entrepreneur mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. after all it's not about you know helping the uh, just helping others still what is the role of entrepreneurs in the society and mm-hmm. what is entrepreneurship really all about mm-hmm. actually yeah so what we discussed before solving mm-hmm. problems if you can ameliorate society and the world mm-hmm. make this world better and more sustainable this It's the, the, the best thing that they can offer in this world. 
Why is that rewarding? Why is this a rewarding experience? Because you feel that you, you, you came here for some years in this world and you, you, you left a legacy. You, you created something better for the, the, the other generation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Before we come to the end, and this is actually the direction that I want to bring you, I would like also to ask you, so now with this new level of consciousness that you have developed over, mm -hmm. over time, um, and you're a bit more mindful in what you do. How do you manage to juggle all these heads? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's actually still quite a lot. Um, I can imagine that uh, you're probably working as much as you used to in the agency or no? <laughs> no it depends. Do, do you work more or less now? <laughs> it depends. It depends. And, you know, I have the um, capacity and freedom to organize my time. Mm -hmm. I might be working on a su Sunday. And I might take a, a day off on Tuesday mm -hmm. and go to the sea. Okay. And on Sunday I might work. So, you know, it's about me organizing a schedule in my time. But all these hats we were talking before, mm -hmm. they all have uh, this common point and this specific intention to be valuable to the other members of, of the community. So it's not about, you know, mentoring, angel investing, uh, podcast, Elenidas Network, they all have this common intention and this rejuvenates me and gives me power every day in a different aspect to continue and do even more 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 hmm. so i guess once you find this place which is very much yours then the stress is not stress it's just uh, an inspiration it's something which is energizing exactly it's energizing okay. it's like being in a flow Mm -hmm. And when I observe something is not working, I am very mindful and, and reflective on what exactly happens there. Mm -hmm. So why I'm stressed or why this is not going exactly, why do I feel something mm -hmm. you know, weird inside me? What, so okay. I'm bringing my consciousness there and I'm focusing on what can I, uh, maybe I can make a small change. Mm -hmm small change in my schedule, small change in my partnerships, small change in my relationships, small change in my habits. What can I change in order to be in that flow? I remember when I started yoga at a very young age. I was all, all, all back then a student. After the yoga classes, I had this feeling of um, you know, I was very, I was feeling very balanced. I was feeling very comfortable. Mm. And I would almost have the feeling that my body tries to keep this feeling for as long as possible. So I guess the secret is to get once or every now and then into this balanced state of your mind, body. Mm -hmm. It's all connected mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. And then your body will tell you how to stay there. Mm -hmm. You just have to memorize it of how it felt. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yeah. have these small um, reminders again mm -hmm. that will put us in that state. Is mm -hmm. it sleep? Is it a visit in the nature? Is it a nice podcast? A nice song? Drawing? What, what are your life hacks? <laughs> <laughs> hacks. <laughs> the sea? The, the sea? Okay. Yeah. okay. The sea but... is my, <laughs> my, my inspiration. Um, I swim almost every day uh, during winter. Really? Yes. But not in the sea? Yes, yes, yes. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. I live by the sea now, so mm -hmm. I go almost every day. I envy day. you secretly. <laughs> yeah. So the sea, for sure, uh, meditation, mm -hmm. nature, connecting with nature. Okay. Uh, sleep, exercise. Mm -hmm. I'm um, training again for the triathlon this year. Mm -hmm. When is it going to be? Uh, there are different in June, in July, in September. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you do it, you just yeah, go totally for it. Okay. Yeah. So exercise cool. as well. Nice conversations and authentic conversations. Mm -hmm. hmm. So uh, you mentioned uh, we spoke about the role of the entrepreneur mm -hmm. in the society and how fulfilling it could be that have this purpose and you feel like a contributing member of this community. I, I have it too. 
I haven't hacked the the, the successful part yet, mm -hmm. just uh, as you, but uh, I there is a long way to go. So if you have to put yourself in, I don't know, a bit older, Steffi, mm -hmm. actually much older, and you look back, what would you like to see on the table? Like if you have all your memories, at, I don't know, the end of your life, what would you like to see like like a must there? Mm. Hmm. Is it a balanced life? Balance? Mm. Harmony? Mm -hmm. um, grace? Mm -hmm. Honesty? Authenticity? No regrets? Mm. No regrets on the table? No regrets? No regrets. Is it possible? <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> trying. Mm -hmm. um, having met my authentic self, having expressed my authentic self in many different ways, less fear and... I'm looking at the table, you know, if... Yeah, if because they're here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Less fear and more love mm. and compassion. In the end of the day, it all comes to all these things which are very, very intangible. Exactly. It's amazing. <clears throat> so, Steffi, why aren't you just, uh, I don't know, relaxing somewhere on the beach <laughs> and, I don't know, meditating? Why are you doing the, the business part at all? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very nice question. <laughs> yes. Because we're here, we have this role as human beings here. Mm -hmm. So we have to work in order to amplify and maximize our impact and our legacy here. We cannot stay by ourselves in the sea or in the, the forest, in the mountain, on, on a deserted place. We're here, we're interconnected, we, we, we are here in order to help each other. So I need to be here. Mm. And I need to be here having this interview with you and doing all these things. Thank you. At the same time. <laughs> Thank you also for doing that. <laughs> it's been amazing. Thank, Thank you, Steffi. Cool. In the next episode of the Recursive Podcast, we welcome the Chief Operations Officer at Mantis Business Innovation, Nikki Karali. In research, uh, you usually have to explain uh, your every statement. You have to you know, write down who you, take it for, who you took it from and uh, you do all of your work basically for the research and for the process and you don't care about the results. Whereas on the entrepreneurship, it's the exact, I'm not gonna say exact opposite, but it's quite different because mm -hmm. we care about the process, but we mostly care about the products that we market. So um, researchers, when they are looking to fund themselves, they do have uh, these um, funding pro programs from Europe but if they, they are in a hurry to find all this, uh, to launch all these products, it's not easy. So we, we work in a way to create a network of investors, to collaborate with them, or even connect them with corporations who are able to, go, to invest in them. And if you are just as passionate about innovation as we are, hit subscribe for the Recursive Podcast on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. We're everywhere.